How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Fall 2005. The most recent update for Horizon 5 and the Rally Adventure expansion saw launch control and anti-lag added to the game. In this video I'm going to show you how to use anti-lag and launch control individually, how each of them work, why it works and also show you telemetry to show you where the benefits come from for each of these features just everything you need to know about both of these features basically so we're going to start off with the launch control now despite what some people are saying the launch control is added to every car in the game regardless of if you have any turbo on it any upgrade any anti-lag whatsoever launch control is its own separate edition that can be found within the assists menu if you go to your assists you'll see launch control on or off now if you have it on obviously it's going to be on all the time including for race starts it's going to do it on its own if you have it off it's as if it never existed to you. Now to put it very simple, as you'd expect, launch control just gives you the smoothest launch possible. Now, Playground Games have said that it's not going to be the absolute perfect launch that you can get out of any car, but it's gonna be damn close. The traditional way to use launch control in Horizon 5 would have been to hold the brake and hold the accelerator down and then let off the brake after the RPM stabilizers. Well, to use the now official in-game launch control, you now have to use the handbrake button and hold the throttle down. And you will see that the LC button in the bottom right hand corner, or the LC light, I should say, will now flicker and flash to indicate that launch control is engaged. Now, you can do this on any stray, any start line, any surface, and the game will calculate what RPM you need to get and how much throttle the game is going to give you to launch perfectly. Plenty of examples on screen of it right now, how it works and what it sounds like. Now launch control in itself is cool enough, but what's even cooler adding to it is the anti-lag, which is awesome. We're going to focus on that in a minute. Now the main point of anti-lag is the fact that this will help your car and your turbo hold boost during a launch and gear changes. Now if we leave anti-lag unequipped and just stick with standard launch control, and go to the telemetry, we'll see a glimpse of what a normal launch is like without anti-lag. We can see that when we're stood still and we are engaging launch control and waiting to set off, we can see that the boost does not build. The boost stays as it usually is when you're idle. It doesn't build boost, it doesn't do anything fancy. It's only that when you set off and start gaining RPMs that the boost will build. And during a gear change, it will lose boost just like you'd expect. That's to be expected. That's nothing to do with launch control, that's just what anti-lag doesn't do. Regardless of that, launch control is still a great thing and it's very simple to use as you can see. It works on any car, regardless of if it's got a turbo or not, and it just makes the launch so much smoother, so much less wheel spin. If you get wheel spin after the launch, that will be, be that will be because you've got traction control off and then it's your responsibility of keeping the grip down. Launch control just takes care of the first five to 10 feet you know, that nought to 20 miles an hour, that initial launch, and then anything after that is your problem, basically. If you're finding this video helpful, guys, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying it, it helps out massively. That's the boring bit. We all want to see what anti-lag is all about. Now, anti-lag is not an assist. That is an upgrade in the tuning menu. You will have seen that if you've launched the game, you will have had a prompt that says anti-lag turbochargers are now available, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, this only works on cars that have got turbos on. Go to engine upgrades, go to turbo, go to the last option, and it will be the same as the standard turbo option, but it will have anti-lag on it as well. And you'll be able to see on the graph in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a slight increase in when the boost is built from, because that's the whole point of anti-lag. It builds and keeps the boost going. And we get the pops and bangs with it as well. If I rev the car without anti-lag, And if I rev the car with anti-lag, oh, it's so cool. It is so cool. You equip anti-lag, you've got launch control equipped. Let's go back to the airstrip and see how they both combine and work their magic. Now, again, you don't have to do anything differently button-wise if you've got anti-lag on. It's just as if it's just an upgrade, you don't have to do anything differently. If you then hold the handbrake and hold the throttle down, you will see that when you're banging off the limiter, engaging launch control, your exhaust will be going mental. Pop, 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 pop. 
And if we go to the telemetry and compare it to before we had anti-lag equipped, we can see that now when we are engaging launch control with anti-lag firing away, the boost is built up and ready to go from the start. You don't have to worry about grip issues for the first 30 mile an hour because the game will sort that out. That's the whole point of the launch control. But then you, you need to take that into consideration after the launch has already happened. So you can see the boost is building and you just launch as usual and you get a much better launch, much more power, turbo ready to go from the start. And as we also showcased earlier as well, the gear changes are also interesting as well. If we remember what it looked like when we were changing gears in the telemetry without anti-lag, the boost was sort of lost a little bit for every gear change. Well, now with anti-lag equipped, when you change gears, the boost will stay full. It will stay as high as possible. You won't lose any boost for the gear changes. You won't lose any boost at all until you slow down, basically. It's amazing. It does everything you'd expect anti-lag to do. Now, there's other cool things about anti-lag as well. Not only do you get the cool popping and banging whenever you're engaging launch control or hitting your rev limiter. When you're at a high RPM and you let off the throttle and let your car basically engine brake, you will get lots of popping and banging as your car is de-accelerating naturally. It will go pop, 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 pop. It's so cool. And as you may have noticed, you will get bangs for the gear shifts as well. Every time you you shift, whether that's an automatic gearbox, a manual, a slow car or a fast car, you will get a bang through the exhaust for every gear change that you have up or down. It's just so cool. I mean, anti-lag and launch control is something we've all wanted in the game. It's in the game. It's really easy to use. It's really beginner friendly. It could be a bit confusing, which is why I've done this video, just to sort of showcase it, how it works. It obviously works with every type of car. What I thought was cool, which I, I'll be surprised if it wouldn't do this, but for cars that have a side mounted exhaust like this Hoonigan here, it obviously works as expected through these side mounted exhausts as well. There's something just so cool about that. Um, but yeah, now, as I said, there are other customization upgrades within this update as well. We're just gonna to touch on it very, very, very quickly. That is the tire profile width customization. Now, when they announced this on stream, they gave us a list of all of the cars that can have this customization applied. Here it is. Now, instantly, myself included, were quite annoyed that we couldn't do this on every car because we could make some killer drag cars and stuff like this. It's only the cars listed on screen. But if you go to tires on any of these cars, you go to tire profile, height or width, whatever it is, you will see that you will then have the option to increase the tire profile width. Now, some of these cars have one width option. Some of them have two. Some of them even have three. It really depends on the car. I had a look through a few of them on screen, as you can see. For anybody who does not know what the tire profile width is, you can see what it is. It literally increases the size of the whole tire, you know, completely. It is a shame it's only on a few of the cars. And as I showed you, some have more options than others, but nevertheless, it's new customization. What are we to complain? Now, the last bit of customization that was added within the update were the rally body kits and the aftermarket body kits for the channel where I went through every single body kit that's been added to the game and showed them all in a video. So look out for that as well. If you have any questions about launch control or anti-lag, pop it down in the comment section below. But for now, guys, that's absolutely everything. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all later.